And then I'm going to put a notice on the Facebook account to join us on YouTube.
All right, I'm officially calling this meeting to order. We are on a late start, it's now 1021. That is what usually happens when we are dealing with technology. But as our theme also include, we have to be persistent, resilient. So there are times in which we have to be remain calm in certain unfortunate right, situations. I'm going to ask Mrs. Franklin Bailey just to lead us in prayer. Seeing that Miss Franklin be gone. All right, so I'm seeing. All right, so folks. All right, so good morning, everyone. All right, can you just say the same prayer? All right, sure. All right, so um, good morning, everyone. Um, as we're about to pray, um, let's ask you know, everyone to ready to give reverence to the Lord. So we can bow our heads now, all right? So thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Father, that we have this morning to um, share your word and to put you in front. Father, as we are about to go into this meeting, I was asking you for your guidance and your protection, Father. Lord, as we are about to do what we have to do, I'm just asking you to lead us in the right direction. Help us to all understand what's here this morning. Help us to, to, to have a productive ear with our students and teacher so we can um edit. We can be better off in life. Lord, I'm just asking you for your, 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 your guidance once more. And anything that we didn't ask for this morning, grant us now, Lord, and lead us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Mr. Fox, for the prayer. At all times, we have to just be remember that we have to put God in front of us in all that we do. And at times in which we are called upon at certain times to do his will, which is our purpose here on earth to carry out his will on earth. Thank you, Mr. Fox. All right, now I'm going to be handing over now to our great coordinator, Miss Reed, who will take the rest of the program. What I'll do, I will share the agenda on the screen so those persons who are watching can see the screen and the agenda for today. And so that all of us can follow. I must apologize again for the late start. We're having had some technical difficulties. So I'm sharing the screen so everyone can see. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to orientation day for grade seven. And as the principal has said previously, we do apologize for the late start. Now, at this time, on behalf of the Board of Governors, Fernford High School, teachers, staff, academic, ancillary, and administrative, I want to welcome everyone to Fernford High School. I am happy that you have made us your school of choice. And whether you were placed via the PEP exam or you sought a transfer, whatever the case may be, however you have gotten here, we are happy that you are here. We are indeed in what we call VOCA time, which suggests this uncertainty. Many of us, even myself, any of us in administration, we have never been through a pandemic. And therefore, we all are aware that these are challenging days. We are fully online and we are social beings and we, are, we, we like the company of others. And therefore, I know the times are challenging, However, it does not suggest that we are going to roll over and play dead, but we are going to fight and we are going to push forward and we are going to persevere. With that said, there are 302 of you who were placed at Fern Court High School so far, and I want to say to all of you, big up on yourselves because you have done well. You are in a very good place and you are in capable hands, and we look forward to serving you because as business operators, because we are in a business, we are supplying a need, you are our major client and we are here to support you. We are here to ensure that your dreams are fulfilled, your ambitions are realized and that you will be the best version of yourself. With that said, there are several persons on the platform who are both who are both, for those who are on this platform and those who are on YouTube at this time, I will not be able to introduce you to all the persons who are a part of the academic ancillary administrative staff because people are all over. However, at a more convenient time, then you will be introduced to everyone. With that said, grade seven is divided into eight classes and they, the classes spell the name of the school. So it's F-E-R-N-C-O-U-R-T. Now, we have gone through your PEP results, students. We have looked at your profiles. We have looked at your performance in your ability test. We have looked at your performance in grade four. And we have made a decision. And we have, we have looked at how is this we can best serve you. And with that, we have decided that we will have a class that specifically targets or provides assistance for those students who fell down a little bit in the English. We're gonna look at the, or the language arts as you know it. And we're gonna look at also those students who fell down a little bit in the mathematics. So currently we have two classes that are called mathematics competency group those need a little help, a little extra help with the mathematics. 
and we have one that deals with language arts. It doesn't mean that you are, as Jamaicans would say, you don't or whatever, nothing like that. We are just looking at the best way to cater to your needs. And Ms. Reed, I think we lost her. Is this how well? Morning, you hearing me? All right, I'm seeing Abigail Brown. Just wave your hand, Abigail, if you're hearing me. All right, good, 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 good. Seems we have lost Miss Reed here. That's what usually happens when you're dealing with technology. Today we have internet, tomorrow we don't have it again. And she was going on so well, but unfortunately she dropped off. So the person you just heard was Miss Melissa Reed, our grade seven coordinator. She was giving you a preview of how students would be placed in the different classes based on your PEP and your grade four performance. So we can put interventions in place for persons who might not have their minimum because we here at Front Court, we work with our students to ensure that they improve and slowly but surely will get there at some point. So, as soon as she's back, I will allow her to speak again, but in the interest of time, because we have grade eight orientation today, let me check to see if she's back on yet. All right, she's not back on, so... When she's back on, I will allow her to continue her presentation. But in the interest of time, the next item on the agenda is addressed by the principal, which is me. My name is Sheldon Thomas, your principal for Frontport High School. It's an honor and privilege to welcome to our new academic year, 2021-2022, as also new students of Frontport High School. I want you to reassure you that as we continue to provide quality education, there will always be adequate challenges here and there, but we have to continue to work together. We have to be very persistent and resilient in all that we do to ensure that excellence is achieved at the end. So I'm going to open my PowerPoint. So this morning, I want to address you, uh, to, I want to share some a plan of action, which we here at Frankfurt High School will be doing to reposition Frankfurt High School as a school of choice here in St. Anne. Now, our theme in, for this academic year, last academic year, we look at persistence, resilience, and excellence. But now we're looking, adding on this upcoming academic year, we are going to have to do some re-imaging education. What we thought education to be 
will have to change as we move into this new academic year. So we're going to be doing a number of initiatives and programs in keeping with the Ministry of Education. Ms. Reed, you're back with us. Mrs. Ms. Reed? Yes, Mrs. Mark, I, I just let you Miss Reed, so I was hoping okay. she could continue our presentation. Okay, okay, let her go ahead. All right, sorry about that, everybody. I, I sincerely apologize. As I was saying, I'm not sure what happened transpired while I was out. As I said, we have eight classes. They spell the name Ferncourt High School or spell the school Ferncourt. And seven F E R N C R regular students had average performances in language and mathematics. 7 C, 7 O and U, those are the two classes that will assist the students who fell down in their mathematics. And RT will assist those students who fell down in their language classes. Now, as I said prior to this, we are not labeling anybody. We are not whatever. We're almost not even going to be telling you specifically how is it that we will be cater into those classes, but I can guarantee you that they will meet your needs. Your form teachers, some of them are here. Miss McIntyre, very nice person who will assist you. She's a teacher of Spanish. Miss Clark, excellent teacher of language. Mr. Horton, brilliant teacher of science. Miss, Mrs. Gentles, Michael Gentles, excellent teacher of Spanish. Mrs. Cox, excellent teacher of mathematics. Ms. Beckford, Mr. Miller, all of those persons, excellent. And I wouldn't have said it before, but I'll say no, that I am Ms. Reed, Minister Reed, your great coordinator, and I will ensure that all of your needs are met, whether we are virtual or we are face-to-face. -face. And I'm sure all of my other colleagues will agree with me that we are here to serve you. We look forward to an excellent school year with you all. A little bit from now, you will be further notified as the days progress. Therefore, education is a partnership. And I want to say that, I want to stress that parents, students, it's a partnership. We have to put in and what we get out based on what we have put in. Parents, you have a responsibility to ensure that your child is online and not just online. The child is doing the work, the child is sending in the work on time because guess what? It's a normal education system. There are still requirements for them to put in their, to send in their work on time, teachers to mark their work and send it back and give feedback. Nothing has changed. The only thing that is different is that we may not be seeing each other every day in a face to face format. 
everybody has a responsibility. Students, it's your responsibility. Get up early in the morning. Get dressed for school because guess what? You have to, you have to arrive. You have to get yourself prepared. You have to be in that frame of mind to say, guess what? I am in class. Therefore, I am not going to be in my bed lying down in my pajamas and at class because the lethargic attitude is going to come in. And if you start that way, I can guarantee that's exactly how you're going to finish. Therefore, let us dwell on the positive side. I know you are eager and you are yearning to go. And I use this medium to say finally, welcome, welcome, welcome. Look, go on our Facebook page. A lot of things are there you can be informed. Many of you have collected your packages. Go through your handbook. Go through your different manuals. See what is required of you. And we ask you not just to sign your contract to say you will abide and you don't know what the rules are. Therefore, it is a partnership. We are working together. Let us have a fruitful relationship. God bless you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Ms. Reed, colleagues, parents, students. Good morning. All right, as you're well aware, we are behind time. So, Mrs. Howell. Mrs. Howell, you're Muted, please unmute. Yes, I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marisa Johnson Howell, Dean of Discipline for Fern Court High School. Again, we want to keep our spirits up and remain positive. These things will happen, but we will face challenges together as we go on. A uh, very special welcome to our new parents, our new students. And I know we have some parents that are returning because they would have children that have passed through the system here or are currently the system. And so I want to thank you for your trust in, in continuing to advance your child's education. I'm going to be sharing my screen quickly, and then we're going to go through a few things, expectations of whether we go online or face-to-face, -face, what will be expected of you at Ferncourt High School. I know that when my guidance team comes up, um, they will educate a little bit about our core values. But at Fern Court, step up is the term that we use. And so as we start this new school year, let us not look at it as school is reopening or a new opening, but let us look at it as a new beginning. As Ms. Reed would have said, we really have to stay focused as a group. This is a partnership, and I'm encouraging us all to be smarter and to be calm as we go through, especially the adults, because we are the ones that set the example for our children. We are the ones that set the pace. And be careful that we don't just react to situations, but that we think and that we respond in the best possible way. A lot of the situations that we are creating is based on our behavior and the environment that we create. And we want to make sure that it is positive, it is encouraging, and it's promoting everybody's best interest as we go forward. I'm not sure what's happening. I'm trying to advance my slide. Okay. So to do that, we need to put people first, create the spaces, be it virtually or physically, that will work. And as the problems come, we try to solve in phases, much like this morning. But the important thing is that we learn from what happened and then we prepare for the future. Now, it's been 18 months since Fernport had 
all our students on campus for classes. But face-to-face -face engagement will only be possible if our students are vaccinated. So let's just address the big elephant that has been out there over the weekend and past week. We can only have all our students returning face-to-face -face if we achieve a 65% vaccination rate or higher. Now, before you make that face, well, 65%, I will wait until everybody else gets it. I want you to take into consideration that we have students at Fern Court who have underlying illnesses. We have students with lupus. We have students with sickle cell. We have students with um, problems with their heart. So we can't expect or rely on everybody else to take the vaccine. We have teachers with some issues as well. So we have to take a personal responsibility on whether we're gonna get vaccinated, yes or no. Before you make that face, also remember, I know that some people may have religious beliefs. I know that some people for whatever information that they are filtering in, will have to make their own decisions. But remember, we're each responsible for the health and well-being, not of only who is here, but who is in our household. So we have to know where our responsibilities lie and how we go forward from this. But until we can verify that we have that 65% vaccination rate, we cannot resume face-to-face -face for all students on the compound. That being said, I will reserve the core values for our guidance council as said, but the rules that I'll be sharing with you right now for when you enter the compound or whether you're virtually online is in line with our core values. Safe, tolerant, eco-friendly, and professional. Therefore, please be advised that everyone, teachers, parents, visitors, students, once you enter the compound, you will be screened. All persons are required to wear a mask when entering the school compound and the mask must properly cover your nose and your mouth. Please note that mask may not cover the entire face. So we don't want to see the balaclavas. We don't want the kerchiefs that are tied up all the way around. And then we, we can't recognize our students. That's very important going forward. You are required to keep your mask on until you safely occupy a space or seat that allows for the required physical distancing. And I know I have four feet there. It, it depends on what the mandate is. We have now gone back to six feet. Upon all entries, persons will be subjected to a temperature check uh, by the designated personnel. And we have taken lengths to ensure that we have sanitizing stations and we have wash sinks around the campus and you're encouraged to use those as you go along. We also ask that you maintain your positions when you're seating inside the classrooms or sit in the designated areas outside of classrooms. Persons who are ill should stay home. We practice physical distance and refrain from hugging, kissing, or shaking hands of other persons. Now I know that when students come, they get excited. You will know some from primary schools. You, you have not seen them in a long time. And it's the natural urge for us, especially in our culture as Jamaica, to hug and share. But we have to exercise caution and practice good respiratory etiquette. We need to avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth thoroughly sanitized. And it may look like that I'm repeating this, but as, our, 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 as Ms. Reed would have said, we have to form these good habits because it's, it's so easy to become saturated and hear it. And so you'll hear it again, even when you come on the compound. If, you, if we suspect that you have COVID or any kind of illness, it is going to be our policy to isolate you and then to report it to the Ministry of Health for us to, for them to take the proper steps and um, to ensure that we keep everyone as healthy as possible. Students, my grade sevens, make sure you protect yourselves and others. 
you would have learned coming up from primary school that now you have to wash your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. In your mind, you can sing the birthday song and that should, should tell you the time frame to wash your hands. Again, remember not to touch your face. Parents, please, if our, if our students are allowed to come on compound, it's very important that they have their own things. We don't want people sharing utensils, pencils, cups, calculators, rulers. We are trying to minimize the passing of those things as much as possible. So I encourage you to ensure that your, your children have their own things in as much as possible and that you tell them, this is not about being selfish or unkind. This is about having your things to, present, to prevent the spread of infectious disease going forward. Students, all of you, we encourage you to be leaders in keeping yourself, your school, your family, and community healthy. Anything you learn at Fern Court, we expect that you share it at home with your friends and family, especially if you have younger brothers and sisters, and that you be good models and you practice the proper etiquette. If you know someone is sick, we do not practice stigmatization nor bullying here. Remember, this is a virus that passes just like how the flu passes. Anyone can get it at any opportune time, especially if the precautions are not being taken. We are now in a big phase of community spread and this disease knows no geographical boundaries. It knows no age, it knows no ability, and it knows no gender. If you are sick, I encourage you again, please stay home. For visitors to the campus, parents, you might feel that you want to come in with your students on the first day. You might feel like you want to pop up and check. Now, while we used to run an open campus policy, we won't be doing that anymore. So please note, now visitors are to enter the compound with students during arrival. All visitors to our school will need to have an appointment to enter the school. If you require assistance, an appointment must be made after, after the start of the school day. And at, at the gate, it's expected that you will state the purpose of your visit. And if it is verified and allowed, then you present yourself to the main office immediately upon entry. You may be required to show a photo ID upon entry, and you have to sign into the visitor's passport. If, you're, if you need to pick up your child or if there's an emergency, which we do anticipate, because we are all humans and things will happen, then you call the office to notify us of what it is and so we can make preparations for you to come in and to collect your chat. Now, it seems like we say these things and everybody should know these things, but I did have the experience with one of my grade seven parents just two weeks ago, coming in and refusing to wear a mask. And then on top of that, proceeded to abuse the staff verbally in the most unkind way and demanding that she gets assistance. Needless to say that she was denied until she complied. But we will not be tolerating that behavior. And we will not be punishing the child for the parent's behavior. This is a partnership and we've got to grow together. But if parents decide to come on the compound and not follow the rules and then become abusive, then it becomes a matter of the law. And I have no hesitation in calling the Jamaica Constabulary Force to remove you from the campus if that is how you choose to behave when you are here. I want to say that in getting to the school, I know it's going to be a challenge if you are to come in face to face. We have been working with a few drivers over the past few months. We have not had any incidents with these drivers. They have been very dedicated and faithful in getting students here. They follow protocols and etiquette. And if you have the opportunity, you can take down their names and number. I know most of you would have gotten this during registration or when you were bringing in back your documents. But as you can see, I have a screen here and I can share it later for you and that information for those who get it. But we do have some drivers who I encourage you 
get in touch with, make sure you work with them. Some are vaccinated, some are working on getting vaccinated. Um, so we, we hope that you use the safest possible mode to get your child to school. Now the virtual classroom space, which I know is where we're gonna start and we're getting going. And, and Ms. Reed would have spoken to some of what I'll present. So I'll try to be as brief, but as clear as possible. We have to stay safe. And in this day and age, everybody's digital, everybody's online, everybody's on some kind of social media platform. When you're on the platform that is not recommended by the school or not being used for educational purpose, please be mindful of the information you share, including pictures, personal information, even among the people you know. Once it's posted, it's there forever for the world to see. And we really want to make sure that you're a well-informed user of the internet. We have had some mishap in the past in our WhatsApp group. Parents, I'm not just speaking to children, I'm speaking to you too. We have had parents posting pictures to, I guess, other companions. And for some reason, it landed in the group accidentally. But then it's there for the other parents to see before it's removed, you have to be very careful. Please do not use social media when you are tired because you might end up posting the wrong thing at the wrong space. You also have to be careful what you post on your status. It cannot be that you are able to post certain things and then your child isn't. You cannot block your child from your own status. Then how can you tell your child that they have to allow you to see their status? It's like a double standard. What we want to do is stay positive and send positive messages and think before we post. I want to encourage our students to be careful of the websites and the social media platform that they use. We have had incidents where I know a particular student used a, a particular service to get a number because they could get data free, but the service was only free for a month. And that number was passed on to somebody else who posted a lot of explicit things in the room because the number was not canceled and it would have been added to our classes. So make sure you're using credible sources, right? As you go through. When you are in the classroom, I ask that you avoid insults, sarcasm, and personal attack on anybody, teachers or students alike. When you disagree with an opinion, make sure the speaker feels enlightened by your statement instead of being slapped by it. Your comments should pull people together instead of pushing them out the door. Avoid typing in all caps and an overuse of punctuation. Might be a challenge for those who are not so savvy with texting like myself, um, but posting in all caps can be seen as shouting and as an insult. Avoid excessive underlining or bold-faced words, or they may be interpreted as an insult. And avoid using the use of symbols, those ones that you know people you use when they want to curse. That also is going to be a breach of our policy. I notice that we have some students dressed in their uniforms. Congratulations to you, well done. To be a professional as a student, you must have a professional email address and dress appropriately in your formal or casual uniform. Parents, I'm encouraging you, if it's even that one uniform, most of you would have gotten your PE gear, so you have the PE shirt, you need it. For your child, I want to reiterate what the great coordinator said. You have to develop those habits. It is what is going to guarantee your success for this academic year. School is not out. If it's online, it is not out. It is still on. You have to be well groomed. Comb your hair, cut your hair. Make sure you look ready for work. When you log in, log in with your full Christian and surname. We don't want to see no Galaxy A11. We don't want to see those things. 
You want to make sure that you are a professional as a student. I'm sorry. When you get into the classroom and you're meeting your subject teachers and your form teachers, they may and can require you to turn on your cameras for at least the first five minutes or the last five minutes or in the middle of a session if necessary. It's important that we know that you are engaged, that you are working and ready to work, or just to check in to see if you're understanding or not understanding. Online teaching is not only hard for students, it's hard for teachers as well, especially if they cannot gauge the student's response. If they don't, can't read their faces to see if they are comprehending the lessons. So it's going to be important that you understand your teachers will need to check in with you. If by some chance, whether it's a data or a social issue, you're unable to turn on your camera, you need to inform your grade coordinator or your guidance counselor, and they will submit a report to us, and then we will know. Because otherwise, from that, you can be considered absent from the class. Again, think before you post, when you're in your chat boxes, please use it for class discussions only. Please, this is school. Attempt to find your own answers. Don't go online, cut and paste, and put those things when you're asked to answer a question. You need to be thinkers. You need to grow. Again, use proper punctuation, spelling, and grammar. It is school, just like if you're in your class writing. That is what you need to practice. Not the acronyms, the icons, or the short term that we use on the internet when we are communicating English language. Refrain from drawing on the screen and being rude. And always, again, I'll say it, be positive and constructive in your comments. Well, let me advise all parents and students that they are expected to demonstrate respect for teachers and classmates in all their learning and teaching engagements. If you are found in breach of the school rules, add an etiquette, swearing, cursing, disrespecting teachers or classmates, issuing threats, cyberbullying, posting inappropriate content or indecent exposure, you can be suspended from online classes as well. And this goes on your permanent record. Again, I'm going to say, just because you're not online doesn't mean that the rules don't apply. The policies and the procedures don't apply. And in that case, if that should happen, you'd have to come into the school with your guardian before you can resume or be reinstated into any kind of modality at all. That being said, again, I must say, habits. Get up, get ready, eat your breakfast, dress for school. Make sure that when you're in classes, you may have your bottle of water, but you're not, you're not having a meal at that time. You act as if you were at school. Because the reality is that habits, get burned right into our brains or psychology permanently. And once you develop a bad habit, it's very hard to stop. You want to keep developing good habits. You want to make sure that you are in control of your behavior. Because when you set bad habits, whether good or bad habits, they really take over 50 to 90% of your waking hours. You say you're not going to bite your nails, and then before you know it, all 10 fingernails are gone because it's what you're accustomed to. It's what the brain has been programmed to do. So we have to parents, you have to guide your children, have to set the pace from now. This is not going to be primary school where they were doing, they're doing almost twice the amount of subjects now, and they're going to need more focus, more discipline. So nerd has to become the new word. And much like you saw the issues here today, just because a teacher may fall offline 
or something, it does not mean that you have free time. The resources as you come along and as you go along, you will let you know what is available to you. It is your responsibility to pick it up and continue learning if an online process is disrupted. I'm almost at the end. I just want to say that going forward as the Dean of Discipline, I want to say we're not about changing children, we're about changing the experience that they have. We are working hard at the school to rearrange your environments, be it physical or online for your child to be successful. I want this to be positive for your students. So you have to encourage them when they meet a goal, if they get up early, if they dress, wow, nice work today, or you've done a great job following the rules this week. And if it's some reason they slip, encourage them to do better the next day. Encourage them to meet that goal. All right? We are about creating problem solvers focused on solutions and not retributions. And I leave you with these colleagues, parents, and students. The great one know that common sense is the foundation of high performance. You have to take responsibility. Your actions, if it's as simple as not going to school and failing, affects the greater whole because your class average fails. And if the class average fails, the grade average fails. And when the grade average fails, the school average fails. And that is what Ubuntu is all about. If you come and you're careless and you contract the COVID vaccine, the COVID um, infection and you take it home, you may bring it to a loved one. And like that young man who ignored advice, and brought it home and both his parents are gone and he's alone, I'm sure he's going through great survivor's remorse. You don't want to be that person. Choose discipline over pleasure and we're all going through a challenging time, but adversity is a catalyst for mental toughness. So welcome again to Ferncourt. I look forward to working with you and I hope you have an enjoyable rest of the day. Yeah. Over to you, Mr. I'm not sure if Mr. Thomas is back, Mr. Anderson. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mrs. Howell, for sharing what our expectation light as it relates to our core values our safety and security as we move into this academic year. All right, so I will be doing my presentation now. All right, so I'm sharing with you the plan of action to reposition Frankwood High School as the school of choice. Now, the last academic year, our theme was persistence, resilience, and excellence. Now we're still dealing with COVID-19 pandemic, and it's also getting worse because each day the numbers are increasing. So now we have to also look at what this upcoming academic year, re-imaging education through persistent resilience and excellence. So this was where I was cut off. So the vision of our school is to empower all stakeholders to achieve his or her maximum potential in an inspiring and engaging environment. And Mrs. Hawuda made some mention on how we want to work together. So it's a collaboration between home and school as we continue with the blended moon of learning and we'll learn more about that shortly. So our vision here at Friend Court is to collaborate with different stakeholders, parents, students, teachers, past students, well-wishers to produce well-rounded and qualified lifelong learners to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. And this is in keeping with the Ministry of Education's mantra, every child can learn. And here at Friend Court, we will put the necessary mechanism in place to ensure that every child will learn. 
So we're going to be doing some improvement in different aspects. So the first one we're going to look at this morning is improvement in technology education and administration. So our grade seven students are coming to Fernport High School and I want to welcome you again, parents, thank you for choosing Fernport High School. Here at Fernport, we use a school management system named My School Jamaica. Let me repeat, My School Jamaica. And that is, this platform is where parents and students can view a child's academic performance and attendance. So we have moved away from printing reports. So each time a teacher entered the grade on My School Jamaica, each student will see his or her performance. And you will see how we deal with assessment later on in this meeting. So this is new, My School Jamaica. So each student will get an ID number and a password. So that's something we'll start look at issuing to the different grade seven students in September. So usually we'll work with the form teachers to get you this information, all right? We're also looking at point of sale integration with the canteen and the talk shop. So we're going to modernize how we do the purchasing, all right? We are going to have additional ICT centers. And when you hear the term ICT, it means information communication technology. So we're currently working on those rooms on the main building here, Oswald Fisher building. Some of you didn't get a chance to come on the compound, but at some point you will get the chance to come. So you'll be able to see these centers. And in terms of our online teaching and learning, we use the Google Classroom platform. So the Google Classroom, so each of you would already get an email address that you would have used at the primary school. That is the same email address and password that you're going to be transitioned over into Fernport High School. Safety and security. This is how I mentioned some safety protocols already, but we are putting in place a face recognition terminal to check temperatures for persons entering on the plant. All right. So if it's too high, you know, we're still dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're setting up that station at the bottom gate. So all persons enter their temperature will be checked. All right. We're going to be also using a smart ID. All right. So when you get that ID, you know, you swipe it and then we know that you're on the compound for both staff and students. And we're going to continue to create partnerships with relevant government agencies to carry out drills and other safety requirements. We want to promote a child-friendly school concept through the school positive behavior intervention support system, SWP this. So the core values step up which Mrs. Howell would have given you some information on, we want you to understand what each of this means and you'll be rewarded based on each of these four values. We will continue the safety and security ambassador program. So even though we're not here at, on the plan every day, but at home, we still have to think about safety and our school rules will be reinforced consistently through personal development and form period sessions. So you're coming in new, great seven student. We don't expect you to know all the rules already, but it's something that will be reinforced. You are going to be, you're going to learn the behavior through personal development and our form period sessions. And we're going to strengthen supervision of students through daily roster. So when you're on the compound, you'll be supervised at all times. We want to improve student academic performance. So Miss Reed would have mentioned that how she arranged the students so we can give the necessary support because we here at Friend Court believe in ensuring that our students benefit from our program so that he or she can benefit and be successful at the end of our five-year program and some of you seven years program because you know that the Ministry of Education is promoting seven-year program mean after grade 11 you move into sixth form. So our apps coaches will work with all subject teachers to plan effectively for, especially for our pathway two and three students. We didn't have much pathway two students coming in grade seven this year, 
right? So it means that most students would have been at the minimum level. It's just that some of you might have gaps as it relates to mathematics and English. And that is why we are strategically placing students so we can give the necessary support. And our teachers, we utilize data, right? So they are going to assess your learning styles so they can be able to prepare and execute the lessons effectively. And our new teachers will have a mentorship program and we want to involve our parents. So you, our parents on the platform, we want to involve you more in your child's education through great PTAs and workshops. And we'll continue to have planned professional development. So if you hear that your teacher will not be at class today for some reason, because we'll always be doing professional development sessions for our teachers, and we are going to be putting intervention programs for students in subject who are below the school target so that we can achieve excellence. Now the blended timetable, now because of COVID-19, you won't be able to be at school every day, right? So there are times in which you'll be online and face-to-face. -face. Now Mrs. Hall would have also mentioned briefly about the vaccination program. So we have to get at least 65% of you to be vaccinated so that we get the opportunity to have face-to-face -face classes. And we're improving our technology infrastructure. You'll be allowed, when you come on the compound, you'll be allowed to bring your own device, all right? We're also formalizing our ICT policy, what to be done, what is not expected of you, we are increasing our wireless Wi-Fi access across the plant, and there are plans to increase the internet bandwidth with the use of fiber optics. So a lot of interesting days ahead here at Fernport High School. And we are going to continue to upgrade the physical and electrical infrastructure. So the parents who would have passed through at some point, you will see the number of works taking place on the plan. That is something that we will continue as we move into the new academic year. I want to improve energy conservation practices in the school through using renewable energy sources. So we have plans in place now to work along with the Ministry of Science and Technology in installing solar panel so we can use less of the normal electricity that we use. So in so that we can save on our bills so the funds can be used for other things. And this is something that we need to embrace, renewable energy sources. And we enforce the school maintenance plan to include basic standards of appearance. So students and parents, we want you to help us to keep the school clean, attractive, so that anybody come on, then we say, whoa, the school looking good, man. But you are a student, when you have face-to-face, -face, you have to help us to ensure that we keep our environment clean. Personal development. So we're going to improve the sports offerings, right? And you would have known that we have won a gold medal in the last Issa Boys and Girls Championship with Abigail Campbell, you see our picture, right? And we have Derek Grant who came third and we have our relay team that what's placed in the final. We want to improve our sports offerings, music and performing arts through partnerships with parents, past students and business community. We're looking to put a sports program in place. And I know some person might be wondering, when Franco is going to start into the Costa Cup? But it's a development process, right? We have to start from scratch because we would have been out of the Costa Cup for over 10 years. So we have to start putting the machinery in place, so put a developmental program in place, but we have interest in playing football. And we want to utilize students' learning styles and preferences to revamp the current clubs and societies offerings in the school. So we do have clubs and society here at Frankwood High School. So we want to revamp it to meet your needs so that we can be very effective and going forward, we will also be 
achieving excellence, not only in academics, but also personal development. And we're still going to have our leadership groups, our prefects, our student council, our monitors to assist us to implement the different programs in the school. We want to prepare a future workforce that adopt better technologies to be more efficient and high quality standards and create. So we're going to be continue our TVET program, our STEM, STEAM, some call it even STREAM now, STEM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, STEAM, Science, Technology, Arts, Engineering, Mathematics. So we want to have robotics, digital animation, entrepreneurship, we want to blend it. So these are some additional offerings that we'll be putting in place so that we, when you leave here at the end of five years, you are ready for the workforce. And we are going to expand our agriculture science project, right? So that we can meet the needs of our canteen and also our community. So at the end of your five years, when you are here at Frankwood High School, you will see that we are, we, want, we have a farm name, a brand, a brand, Frankwood Farms. So it's something that we can look up to and, and of quality and excellence as we ensure that we meet the needs of our current population and other persons around. And we continue to renovate the canteen and top shop by selling additional food items. So we have our jerk area. Yes, so sometimes you will have jerk chicken for your lunch when you're here at Frankwood High School. We have different varieties of food items. So as I said to you before, interested days are ahead here at Frankwood High School. And we already recruited a chef, right? And staff members will require customer service and culinary skills to revamp our canteen menu. So parents, we also want to know your skills, right? We want to know your skill set so you can help us to contribute to our school development. So at some point, we'll ask for your special skills to your grade so that we can develop a program where you can come in. Because if you get a chance to come on the compound where we have our staff lounge, it was done by our parents. The painting, the donation of different items. So I know you have the skills, so we want you to help us because 5,500 is not enough to run a school, to call it. So if we can get persons to come in and give us certain services and so, it will be a big help. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And we'll continue to have outreach programs, right? To support our primary school teachers in this constituency, South East St. Anne, that's Quality Education Circle 23. And we will continue to strengthen partnerships with external stakeholders through yearly consultation with our member of parliament, past students, and community members, including business, police, and churches, to strengthen our school programs. Our marketing strategy, finally, we want to continue to post positive information. So we already have our school's YouTube channel that some of you are viewing right now, right? So we'll continue to do that, and I want you to go on and watch previous videos on it. We are also going to be using our social media platforms, eh? Facebook, Instagram, to provide information. And we are currently working on a school website. And how are we going to get there? Through teamwork, shared vision, communication, capacity building, accountability and constant review and evaluation. These are important as we continue on our goal to provide quality education. Parents, students, and teachers, we have accomplished a lot and we still have more to do as we continue to provide quality education for our students who are our main stakeholders. 
There are going to be times in which we have challenges, or it's going to take us to just sit down and collaborate as best as possible to ensure that we achieve our goals. All right, now I'm going to invite Mrs. McDonald to give you some information about our timetabling. As I know, some may not be wondering, how many are here not about no timetable or something? So she will just give you a brief information on it, and then I will come back now to wrap up my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, students. Good morning, parents. Ah, it's good to be able to address our new students this morning. It's good to see you. I'm really looking forward to the day when we'll be able to meet face to face on this compound. I trust that you know you listen to our principal, you listen to your great coordinator, you listen to our Dean of Discipline, and that you're all geared up and you are ready to go. All right. I am excited. I'm very excited. It's the start of a new school year. And I know that you are coming from your, your respective primary school. Some of you are coming from prep schools and transitioning to high school can be somewhat tedious. Yes. And parents, I can assure you that the team here, the great coordinator, the teachers, we are all on board and we are willing and ready to work with your sons and daughters to help them to make that transition into secondary school. And I know that at this point, some of the students are wondering, what are some of the subjects that I'm going to be doing? I'm entering a new school. I'm going on to secondary education. Things are going to be a bit different now from what I'm accustomed to in the primary school and the prep schools. But I want to say to you, students, I'm talking specifically now to my students and the new parents, that there are certain core areas that you will do. And these are the same areas that you're accustomed to doing at the primary level. You're all going to be doing mathematics. You're all going to be doing English. You're all going to be doing integrated science and social studies. These are the core areas that you're going to be doing. And I, and I know that you have always been doing these areas. So they are not new to you, all right? But of course, it's high school. So there are gonna be other areas that you're going to be doing. All right, so there are some other subject areas that you're going to be doing, and some of these areas are going to be new to you. So now you're going to be doing English literature, physical education, music, all right? Yes, we have a music program here. Information technology. All our students in grade seven are going to be exposed to information technology. I know those of you who are probably coming from the prep school, you would probably be doing information technology in your prep school. I'm not sure about those coming from the primary school, but here we are going to level the playing field. So irrespective of whichever school you're coming from, you're all going to be given the opportunity to do information technology. And parents, students, I want you to pay keen attention when you go to your information technology classes, because remember, look at what happened because of the pandemic. And we had to transition to online learning. So these are the skills, the skills that you're going to develop in your information technology classes. These are skills that will able, enable you, sorry, to navigate your way through the Google Classroom. And these are the skills that are going to help you to be able to make videos and post them and to submit your work to your teachers and stuff like that. All right. So I really want you to pay attention to that. Then there is library science. And parents, I know you're going to agree with me that they're moving into high school. They're going to have to learn how to do some form of research. So we have to teach them, you know, we cannot just assume that they know how to do these research and how to present, a, do a project and present it properly. So all those things they will learn in their library skills. And of course, here at Frankfurt, we focus on not just the development in the academic aspect of their lives 
but we have to look at the, the whole being, the total being. We have to look at their personal development. So personal development is key parents, along with health and family life education, especially now during the pandemic. These are the times when we really need to sit with our students and talk to them and provide them with the necessary guidance that they need to survive in this day and age where things are changing every second, all right? So the personal development and the health and family life education program is there to facilitate that. Then of course, we have to look at other aspects of their development. So they're given an opportunity to do visual arts or religious education or drama. Now let me explain. Those are three subjects that you will see on the timetable in one slot, okay? But it's one per term. So follow me now, guys. The school year is divided into three terms. There's a Christmas term, there's the Easter term, and there is the summer term. So during the Christmas term, for example, if Mary is a student here, Mary may be doing visual arts during the Christmas term. But in the second term now, which would be the Easter term, Mary would do religious education. And in the third term, which is the summer term, Mary will do drama. So each child will get an opportunity to do one of these areas each term. Understood? All right, somebody thumbs up if you understand that. Good, 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 good. All right, and then there is the r and area, which is the resource and technology. So it's business, it's industrial technique, it's agriculture, it's family and resource management, okay? Those are all the areas that we're offering to grade seven students under the r and umbrella. However, they will not do all four areas. They will only do two areas for the academic year. Now, when they move to grade eight, they will get the opportunity to do the other areas that they did not do in grade seven. All right. Now, in helping you to understand the timetable a little better, when you get your timetable, I'm going to share some information with you now that will help you to navigate your way through your timetable and will help you to understand the timetable better. Um, the timetable consists of eight teaching sessions. So there are eight sessions in a day, and there's one break period, which is your lunch time. All right, registration or devotion will begin at eight, so, sorry, 7.50, and it will be for the period 7.50 to 8.30. And then the first teaching session begins at 8.30. So students, at 7.50 in the mornings, when we start online come next week, all being well, you're gonna go on to the different platform that the principal is gonna put in place for you, whether it's gonna be via Zoom or it's gonna be via the, the YouTube channel, and you're gonna join us for general devotion. And during that time, you will also have your registration done. And then the first teaching session will begin at 8.30. Our sessions normally are for, last for 40 minutes. And when you get to your timetable, you will see that some of your classes are double session, as in two sessions, so that would be 80 minutes, or some of your classes are single sessions, which will be 40 minutes. And your break time or your lunch time is at 10.30, and it will run from 10.30 to 11.10, that's 40 minutes, and our dismissal time is 2.30, all right? And let me share with you, really, if you look on this, on my screen, you will see it there, 7.50 to 8.30, that's registration. And then 8.30 to 9.10, we have our first um, teaching session. And you can just look at it, 9.10 to 9.50, 9.50 to 10.30. Then at 10.30 to 11.10, you'll have your lunch. After lunch, you resume. And we go all the way down until 2.30, where we have dismissal. So I'm going to be posting your timetable because your timetable is ready. And I'm going to be posting the timetable on the Fern Court assignment page. So come with me. Your timetable will be posted on the Fern Court assignment page. I'm going to be typing the link to the Fern Court assignment page in the chat. So students and parents, I want you to write that off. And before we begin, before next week, we're gonna be posting the timetable there 
Your class list will also be posted there. So you'll be able to go to that same assignment page and see whether your child is going to be in 7F, 7E, 7R, 7N. And then once you know which class the child is assigned to, you just look for the timetable for that class. Let me go again. So we're going to be posting the class list to the assignment page. When you go on the assignment page and you look for your child's name and your child is Mary Jane and you see that Mary Jane is in 7F, all you need to do now is look on the same assignment page and pull down the timetable for 7F, all right? So as I said, I'm going to be typing the link to the assignment page in the chat and there are just certain crucial information that we will put directly in our, on our assignment page, like the class list and so on. We don't really want to put the names on Facebook like that. So those we will put directly to the assignment page. So it's very important that you record and you keep that link, all right? Thank you very much, guys. Looking forward to seeing you. Looking forward to working with you. All right, thank you, Mrs. McDonald, for that presentation. So, by Friday, you will can consistently check on that link to see any updated information. That's a page that we use to upload. As Mrs. McDonald said, your timetable, your class list, your name of form teachers, and so forth. That's a page that we use. So just ensure that you always check in that page because those are, there are certain information we can put on social media, right? So that's where we want you to go each time to check off any updated information. Finally, we're going to, I want to share a video on assessment briefly with you, and then I will take the questions. So just be, bear with us, please. Assessment, assessment. Assessment is a buzzword in our teachers' classes at Burncourt High School. It is the means by which our teachers evaluate your child's learning to see if concepts taught throughout the month, term, or year have cemented. Here at Burncourt High School, our students are given two pieces of assessment each month, one of which is a formal end-of-month test, and the other, an alternate means of assessment, which can be a presentation, a project, class assignment, homework, portfolio, etc. At the end of the term, our students are then given standardized formal examination for each subject. These exams are done in December and June of the academic year. Let us now examine how we arrive at the final subject grade on your child's report card. On the report card, you will see three columns, coursework grade, exam grade, and total grade. Note carefully that the coursework grade represents 40% of your child's final subject grade, and the exam grade represents 60% of the final subject grade. When we add the coursework grade and the exam grade, we will arrive at the total grade for the subject. Let us now look at how we calculate the 40% coursework grade. There are four months in the Christmas term, September, October, November, and December. In December, students complete their end of term examinations. In the month of September through to November, our students complete their coursework pieces. Let's take a look at the table displaying Paul Brown's grades for the Christmas term. Paul would have received homework and end of month tests for the month of September. He would have obtained 
Assessment, assessment. Assessment is a buzzword in our teacher's classes at Ferncourt High School. It is the means by which our teachers evaluate your child's learning to see if concepts taught throughout the month, term, or year have cemented. Here at Ferncourt High School, our students are given two pieces of assessment each month, one of which is a formal end of month test and the other an alternate means of assessment, which can be a presentation, a project, class assignment, homework, portfolio, etc. At the end of the term, our students are then given standardized formal examination for each subject. These exams are done in December and June of the academic year. Let us now examine how we arrive at the final subject grade on your child's report card. On the report card, you will see three columns, coursework grade, exam grade, and total grade. Note carefully that the coursework grade represents 40% of your child's final subject grade, and the exam grade represents 60% of the final subject grade. When we add the coursework grade and the exam grade, we will arrive at the total grade for the subject. Let us now look at how we calculate the 40% coursework grade. There are four months in the Christmas term, September, October, November, and December. In December, students complete their end of term examinations. In the month of September through to November, or students complete their coursework pieces. Let's take a look at the table displaying Paul Brown's grades for the Christmas term. Paul would have received homework and end of month tests for the month of September. He would have obtained 80% for the homework and 85% for his end of month tests. In October, Paul did a presentation and received 100% as his score. He also completed his end of month test and obtained 90%. In November, Paul received a project and obtained a mark of 95%. He sat his end of month test and received 85%. To calculate Paul's total coursework grade for the Christmas term, we would add all the grades he obtained, which are 80% plus 85% plus 100% plus 90% plus 95% and 85%. The total would amount to 535. Now we would have realized that Paul received six pieces of coursework grades for the term. We therefore would want to find what Paul's overall coursework average would be. We would then divide 535 by 6. Our answer would be 89%. Therefore, Paul's overall coursework average would be 89%. Remember now, the coursework is 40% of the final grade. Therefore, we would find 40% of 89. So that is 89 multiplied by 40 divided by 100. And our answer would be 35.6. Therefore, Paul's coursework average would be 35.6. So now that we know the coursework grade, we want to calculate Paul's 60% exam grade. Paul sat his exam in December and received a score of 90%. To find the 60% exam weighting, we must now multiply 90 by 60 divide by 100. Our answer is 54. Paul's exam grade is 54. The final step is to calculate Paul's total grade for the subject. We must now add the coursework grade of 35.6 to 
to the exam grade of 54. The final subject grade amounts to 89.6. I hope that you now have a better understanding of how to calculate your coursework and your exam grades. I trust that as you go throughout the term this academic year, you will work assiduously to ensure that you complete all course assignments and achieve academic excellence. Right, so thank you, Mrs. Franklin Bailey, our exam coordinator for putting that video together. And it will be something that we will post each time as a reminder so persons can know how we deal with our assessment here at Franco High School. But one thing I would just want to point out to our parents and students that you need to complete all your assessments, right? If you don't submit any work, you're going to get zero. And I know with the online learning, some persons will have challenges with submitting the work, but have that dialogue with your subject teacher. They're not that hard, you know. But if you don't reach out to your subject teacher to say you're having internet challenge on a particular day and you make an arrangement for collection, but you have to have the dialogue. You cannot just assume that we here at Friend Court know what is happening. So I'm saying to you, grade seven parents and students, that you must complete all assessment because you are going to get zero. And you see how Mrs. Franklin Bailey work out the coursework. So if it's six pieces of work to be done for the term, we're going to divide whatsoever you submit by six. So it de depends, it varies from teachers to teachers, all right? Now I know some persons were, I was checking on the YouTube channel, some persons were asking when they're going to get their, their bottles and other goods that we say we have. They are already here at Front Code High School, but you know, due to the restriction posed by the government. So we have to look at a schedule to be developed for when you can come in to collect those goods and services, your handbook, your rental book and so forth, all right? Mr. Thompson, get ready to present. Mr. Thompson, guidance counselor. We'll be looking at the guidance program. He will be talking to you more about our guidance program, but until he comes, let me just take a question. Anne-Marie, go ahead. All right, she Anne Marie, Shalene Whittle, go ahead. Um, good, uh, good morning. I'm just checking on the link that the teacher um, prior to you said that she would post in the chat room for okay. the way forward with the timetable. Um, would that be posted before the meeting ends? Sure, I will do it for you, no problem. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Good, good. Sir Thompson, over to you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, um, students, um, new students. Good morning, grade seven students. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, parents. Welcome again to Frank Road High School. Um, we are delighted, we are happy to have you with us. With us. So as I start my presentation, So the guidance, counseling, the guidance and counseling department um, and our motto is that we are here for you. We are here for our students. We are here for our parents. We are here for you. 
All right, so the guidance, council, um, guidance department mission statement is all about in terms of nurturing and molding our students to achieve excellence, thus empowering them for optimal performance in all areas of their lives. Right? We um, so that is our goal. That is our mission statement. We um, that's what we strive to do. We play that part in in our students' lives um, as well as to assist our parents as best as we can. All right. So let me um, introduce you to the rest of the team. So up first is Mr. Randall Warren. All right. Um, Mr. Randall Warren. Then you, so he is generous. Oh, we're also seeing some other things coming up right here. Positive. All right. And then yours truly, Mr. Tina Thompson. Compassionate, kind, creative. You have Miss Patricia Park. All right. And then resilient. I'm not seeing what you're here, so helpful. And um, last but not least, Miss Patricia White. All right. So these are your counselors, um, grade seven students. You will be seeing some of us in your personal development class, and you will be seeing us up um, in terms of well, when the, um, the physical space is um, open up, when we have achieved that sixty-five percent and over in terms of vaccination, you will be able to see us in the physical space. But also, to even in your online classes, you'll be seeing us. Um, you'll be seeing us teaching your classes, um, especially personal development. All right. Determine, creative, giving. All right. So here are our primary, primary rule, roles and functions. All right. So we provide counseling service. That is career, group, individual, group counseling. Uh, a number of counseling services that we provide to our students, right? We also provide coping skills. We also do med mediation as well too, for peers as well as for adults, right? As well as we do varying interventions with our students in our community, right? So um, these are some things that we that we do. We also give guidance lesson. You heard me talking earlier about the personal development class, right? That is what we do. We also do referrals. We do assistance in terms of welfare and path. I will be um, talking further about uh, welfare and path um, a, a little further in terms of those who are currently on path. Right, and you know that say oh, once you have moved away from your primary school, once you're entering a new school, the Ministry of Labor has urged all path parents to make sure that say you you register your child with them. That said, look here, my child has now moved on to a new school, so so um we will be um in terms of providing that letter, and I'll be sh sharing with you how exactly we will be able to can get those those information from you, and not just for those past. Uh, um, students in part but general in terms of the um our data in in terms of, of for our students we also provide psychosocial support you know that's it in this day and age the cycle which deals with the mind but also social in terms of how we interact right with each other right so we want to provide a means by which we can engage the mind and also to allow our students to can be social in terms of how we interact with our environment right now from core high core values now you will have heard miss howard speak about the core values right so we talk about being safe we have to be safe students we have to uh, 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 um, do things that will allow us to be um, safe in terms of in on online right in terms of not going on on websites that are that are not appropriate right we also have to in terms of um, safety in terms of how it is that we carry ourselves how it is that we handle ourselves whether it is in our communities when our when we are going home we have to be safe right so we want our students and it is and of course the mantra of, that we use is actually step up right and so you'll be learning more about step up as you as you are uh, uh, um, engaged this year you're gonna learn a whole lot about step up step up and so we want our students to be safe 
safe safe safe safe safe in terms of in their homes safe when they come to school safe when they are on the road we we are emphasizing that to our students to be safe next we want them to be tolerant now it is not everybody who it is that you um that you interact with that you will get along with so even though the person may say something to you right and you do not agree with the person it does not mean that you have to retaliate all right too many times our students um because somebody perhaps um, um said something to them right they believe that said they must retaliate so therefore they are not tolerant of the person or that's it because of the person's views on a certain topic right and so that's how oh, they deal with that person a practical way and this is the same way in terms of even being safe right so all of them are interrelated they are interconnected all right and so we'll be teaching more about these things miss how i went through them and i'm of course i'm just re-emphasizing re-emphasizing them again so we ought to be tolerant of each other all right next we have to be eco-friendly all right we have to take care of our environment we have to students this is where we live um this is where we go to school um your your environment wherever it is that you live wherever it is that you um um that you go to play and stuff like that we have to take care of our environment we have to be eco-friendly we have to look at the way in which we we do things the way in which we we dispose of our garbage the way in which we we treat our environment we have to be environmentally friendly Right, and it's not just the teachers, right? It's not just uh, uh, um, adults, but students too, right? Students can't be eating bag juice and then throwing it outside of a car window, right? That is no a no no, right? Uh, that is not something that we promote, right? You can't be um eating something and as you're walking, the entire place is messy, right? The classrooms when we go into the physical space and the classroom is um um when you enter the classroom in in the morning classroom is speak and span clean by the time by the end of the day the classroom is dirty right nobody tries to take up or to clean up the classroom we want to be eco-friendly we also too want to be a positive a positive mind right we have to start developing positive ways and positive way of talking to ourselves and be kind to ourselves students be kind to yourselves. Be positive. Be positive in your mind. Be, be, be positive in a way in which you look at life itself. Right? Young men know that said that's that's you are worthwhile. Young ladies, the same thing too. We have to start developing positive attitudes and positive behavior. Positive thinking. Right? The Bible tells us that's it, uh, uh, um, that's it, or whatsoever things that are positive, whatsoever things are of a good report. Um, if there is any virtue in them, these are the things that we ought to be thinking on, right? So therefore, we want to be positive in our attitude as well as in our altitude, right? So attitude and altitude, we have to be positive when we are going about. We also then have to practice Ubuntu, meaning that say, oh, my behavior, the way in which I do things, will end up affecting the persons in my community so therefore um I, I, I am responsible for my community right i remember years ago when i was growing up right um they always said that said the community raised the child right i we want to I, and and that is the type of attitude that we want to start thinking that's it we are responsible for our community we're not going to become like esau esau when god asks esau where is your brother esau said uh um, sorry not esau my apologies not esau not jacob and esau right um i'm talking about um um adam and eve's uh, 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 um sons that he uh, uh, um, had right when um when one of them was asked where is your brother and he then said to god said god after me to know am i my brother's keeper we are our brother's keepers all of us are our brother's keeper i am responsible right um for my brother's sake 
right? So we have to practice Ubuntu, right? Then we also have to be professional, right? So we have to dress the part. Students, we have to dress the part, right? We have to talk the part as well too. There's nothing wrong with us talking in our natural native tongue. However, there are time and place for everything, right? The way in which we do things, the way in which we talk to a person, the way in which we interact with a person, we have to be professional, right? Right? We have to, um, in terms of um, even saying things like yes and no, right? Some simple things as thank you, Right? We have to practice these things in terms of us being professional too, right? So, so, and we also in terms of our work ethic and 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 way in which we present our work, right? To to our teachers, we have to start practicing these things and we have to start reinforcing it. This week is that we going into no school, school starting next week, and so therefore we have to start practicing these things that we want to see, right? Um, um getting things done, pre-fooding things. Right before it is that we give it all to the teachers, right? So we have to start you now practicing the things them that we want to. So we have to be professional, right? And of course, as we, as I said before, this is our core value. We have to be professional, Ubuntu, positive, eco-friendly, tolerant, and safe, right? And these are the steps that we're gonna be. Uh, um, these is our core value. These are the things that say uh, that when you see a Ferncourt high student, the, the Ferncourt high school student produces these type of students right here that are safe, that are tolerant, that are eco-friendly, that are positive, that thinks about their community, Ubuntu, and then are professional, right? So, in closing now, um, the, the Fur Court High School is here to serve you. It's here to serve you, the students. It's here to serve you, the parents. Right? We, I'm gonna be posting a link to a um, Google form that I'm gonna ask parents to sit down with your um, children to fill out. Right? We're gonna be asking in terms of um, just, just, just to just get some um, data um, from you in terms of finding out whether or not your student, um, your child, or your ward is actually on path, and so that we can assist in terms of giving that letter and then make it avail available to you as soon as possible. So we're gonna be putting it uh, um, on Zoom as well as on YouTube. So the link will be provided to you. And so, and so you can start filling out that form, right? It's not a very long form. It's very, um, um, very easy, easy to do form. And we we'll want our students and parents to fill them out together, right? Um, to provide those type of particulars for us so that we can, uh, uh, um, engage, start, starting, starting to engage our students. I want to thank you guys. Um, we are here to serve you. The four, the four, four of us guidance counselors, we are here to serve you, right? You will be meeting us in your classroom, students, right? And know that so you can speak with us. Parents, we are also here for you, right? Parents, wards, we are here for you as well. Because guess what? As what was stated earlier by um, Miss, by our dean, right? We, we, are, we are here as a partnership. Right here in a partnership, and the partnership um, uh, um, is all about making our students the center as well as helping them to become their best version of their selves. I want to thank you guys for listening to me and have yourself a, um, a good rest of the day. Over to you, Mr. Thomas. All right, thank you, Mr. Thompson, for that presentation. All right, in the interest of time, just want to go quickly over to Nurse, Nurse Spirit. Morning, 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 everyone. Morning, everyone. Hi, right, morning. Morning, sir. Good. Um, morning, everyone. I am Good morning. morning. I am Nurse Simone Peart, and I'm the nurse for Fern Court High School. I hope you're all doing well, and I would like to welcome you all back to another academic year 2021 to 2022 a year of persistence, resilience, excellence, and let us not forget good health, okay? So as we know, 
as we all should know, our government aims to bring us back to face-to-face -to -face settings. So I'll touch on vaccination first. So to go back in a safe manner, I would like to first encourage you all for those students and parents and even staff members to make an appointment to get your vaccines, okay? So you can make your appointments um, by visiting the Blitz sites when, we're there, when, when it is available, you can walk in, you can make your appointment online at www.moh.gov.jm or you can call a vaccination center to make your appointment. Call one, well, you can call 888-663-5683, that is 888-1-LOVE. Okay, so Mrs. Owell already spoke about wearing my social distance, so I won't have to touch on that, but I will still have to encourage you all to do the same. Um, we realize that even some persons or students, when they come in, they don't wear their masks on the taxis and so forth. You should wear your mask everywhere, whether you're vaccinated or not. Okay, so you should wear your mask everywhere you go. Okay, we encourage parents to when face-to-face, -face, if it is allowed, you should let your, let your child walk with their own hand sanitizer. This is good. Anywhere they go, they go in the taxis, they touch here, they touch their, they need their own personal hand sanitizers. If I can just touch back on the vaccination besides um, we have realized that some parents, the reason why they don't want to visit the blitz sites are sometimes health centers because they don't want to carry their children here. They're saying, oh, they, it's crowded and they don't want the crowd here. If it is with your permission that we, well, if it is that you're interested in having your child, have you been yourself vaccinated? We, 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 as a school, Fern Court High would, can have a blitz at school, but it depends, as I was speaking to one of my public health nurses, it depends on the amount of persons who are interested in having a blitz site at the school. So we cannot have a blitz site at the school and then we have about 10 persons. The, the, the public health nurses and the persons who are, who are in charge won't come to the school. So it depends on you as the parents, if you're interested or you're going to commit to taking your child there and to get the vaccine. So the next thing I want to speak about is medicals. So we advise persons, grade sevens, we advise you all parents to complete the medical properly and correctly. Um, each page is there for you to complete. You have one page, the first page would, would deal with um, you, the contact in, emergency information, father, mother, you, the parents should, our guardians should complete that part. Then you have the second page, which, should, which talks about the illness of that child. You also complete that, the doctor does not complete that. You are the ones who know about your child, and so you can tell if they have that kind of chronic illness and so forth, so forth in the past. So you're supposed to pick, pick what kind of conditions your child has because once they come to school, if any little accident or emergency or they get sick at school, we would go back to the medicals to ensure that that was the case with your child. And so we can relay that to the doctor if it is we need to take them to the doctor or the hospital. Okay, the consent form also, you should also complete that part. The consent form is you giving the school permission, giving the school permission. So I'll take your questions afterwards. The consent form is for you, um, parents, giving the school permission to take care of your child. And we do have emergencies all the time. They will come, they haven't eaten, they have accidents at school. And so the school would be responsible. If it is, they come back face to face. 
to take them to the hospital or the doctor if it is the case. Differently, if they're sick, we'll call you and you come for the child. But if it is, it is an emergency, we have to take them to the doctor. We won't sit and watch your child and make anything happen to your child. We are there for the children. We're there for the students. We are going to move with them to make, ensure that their health and safety is, is well protected. So immunization, we ask you, we, we, we encourage you to make sure that your child, um, they are fully immunized against all, well, against all the diseases out there. So chicken pox, whatever, polio, all those, we ensure that they get all those vaccines. Um, I will be checking the farms to ensure that they're fully immunized. If it is that they're supposed to get vaccinated, we encourage you to make sure that they are fully vaccinated, especially in these times. Um, another point is we do not give medications at school. So if it is that your child has a condition well, let me name it if it is that they, they trouble with headaches or they trouble with menstrual cramps and so forth. Especially if they are asthmatics, we will ask, we encourage you to ensure that they walk with their medication. They take their medication. If it is they come back face to face, they take it at the sick day. That's in my office and I'll monitor all of that. So we want you to give your child the medications that they need, we will give it to them. Or on the farm, the medical farm, there's a part that you give permission, which is completed by a doctor. The doctor will sign there, where you give permission for the school or for me to give your child medication. And they, the doctor would write the type of medication that they should take over the counter or whatever they're on. So you give permission, and if it is that we have that medication at school, for example, the pain tablets and the, the, the flu, uh, flu tablets or so forth, we will give it to your child. But it is that it is all with consent from you. We won't give your child anything that is not is not for is not addressed for us to give the child. Okay. So for everyone, we still encourage you about personal health. I'm sure Ms. Owell spoke about this. I'm sure the guidance counselor spoke about personal health. So you should take care of vitamins, exercise, rest. Online schooling is very, very frustrating, and I understand. And that is why I even spoke to some parents. Those are the ones who I've seen bring their students out to be vaccinated. They said they don't want their child at home sitting down, so they rather they go back face to face. So they come and they take the vaccine or give the child, make, make sure the child is vaccinated so the child can go back face to face because it's really frustrating to have the child at home sitting around a computer. It can cause damage to your eyes and all the other conditions where, that it takes to sit around a computer constantly. And it is, it is somewhat boring. So once they're face to face, they actually have the person in front of them. They learn better and they can ask questions and they can socialize in a safe manner. All of those. So we encourage you, take care of your mental health, drink water, take your vitamins, and eat healthy. This is all important for you, every single person, staff, students, and parents, okay? So if there are any questions, I will take them, I will answer them in the chat. So thank you all again, welcome for those coming new, old, current, Welcome to Ferncourt High. Please have a blessed day and please stay safe and take care. Thank you. Over to Mr. Thomas. Thank you, nurse, for that presentation. I've been observing what's happening in the chat. I um, just want to inform your parents that if I know some of you don't reach the age, the child don't reach the age of 12. Because I remember when I was at the vaccination blitz at money last week, that was a concern that was raised. Some of you coming into grade seven, you would reach age 12 yet. And it's just only when you're 12 and older, you can get the vaccine, all right? Now I also observe in the chat, question asks if your child is not vaccinated, if they can come to school, 
Well, based on the bulletin I received last week, it said it's only vaccinated students can come to school. That's what I got last week. So that's what I'm working with now until otherwise stated. So if a child is not vaccinated, you will not be able to come to school for face-to-face -face classes, all right? So that's the last directive I received from the ministry last week. So I know there are concern of those persons who don't reach age 12, but those who reach the 12, I'm encouraging you to go and get it because first of all, we have to get 65% of the school population to be vaccinated. I'm going to get a list from the Ministry of Health of the students at Fern Court who took the vaccine who are fully vaccinated. And based on that amount and the population, they will work it out to see if we get 65% and only those who are vaccinated can come to face-to-face -face classes, all right? Person want to know if they can bring out signing documents. Yes, we're still open for this week from Wednesday to Friday to come with their outstanding documents. In terms of the class list, we we'll post it later this week on the assignment page. So those the list that you're seeing on it now is for last year. We're going to take them down and put up everything fresh. Uh, later this week, because I know your great coordinator already completed the class list already. And she will also provide the information for the form teachers as well. All right, Miss Reed, anything until we come to the end of the agenda? Anything you want to say? Oh, unmute. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Nothing further. All right, thank you. All right, so it's now 1218 and the grade eights are waiting patiently. I must say, apologize for the delay, but we need to break now so we can facilitate a grade eight meeting. I want to use the opportunity to thank you all for coming on. I know you wanted to meet your teachers, but all of them are not on because some of them are actually on the YouTube channel. So until we get things better in terms of having one person on one platform, then we do the necessary introduction. You will meet the different teachers and staff here at Fern Court High School. It was a pleasure having you with us this morning. And I want you to keep safe. We don't want to hear that one of our students our parents, our teacher contracted COVID-19, so be safe. Hospital, no, no, look good right now, based on what I'm seeing and what is posted on social media. So stay safe, practice physical distancing, wash your hands often as what nurse said, and ensure that we can safely return to school, hopefully, hopefully in October. So we'll start with online classes on Monday, September the 6th. So just keep checking our assignment page for the necessary information. Have a wonderful afternoon. Or oh, somebody's asking about create a WhatsApp group. We don't have most of our persons here now, but eventually we'll work on that when we start next week. Thanks again for joining us for our orientation, the Great Seven Virtual Orientation. On behalf of the management staff here at Frankfurt High School, I wish you a good afternoon and continue to stay safe.